Well, welcome back to SAFC Live. The game has finished down at Turf Moor. It was Burnley nil, Sunderland nil, Danny. And it was, you said in commentary, it was maybe the first half you were expecting, but were you expecting a little bit more from Burnley in the second half? Or do you think it was yeah. Sunderland's good defending? A bit of both. Uh, I expected more from uh, from Burnley. I thought, you know, Vincent Company would have had a few words at half time. You know, they had that disappointment in the cup last time out and, you know, they had the break since then. But just thinking he would have thought, let's not try and coast home yet. The, listen, they're going to get promoted, probably win the league unless the, the wheels come off dramatically. I can't see that happening. Um, but yeah, they, they moved the ball slow at times. You could hear the crowd towards the end, really. I know that's, that's the way they want to play and it's gotten where they are so far this season. But sometimes maybe just mix it up a little bit more, go a little bit more direct. I'm not saying shell it long over the top, clip balls forward, go and play in Sunderland's half. They didn't really do that enough. Um, you could see Barnes was dropping deep. He was getting frustrated. Didn't see a lot of the ball. Teller, the two wide men, we handled them well, really well throughout the evening. Um, and I guess so when credit Bar to the boys. And when Barnes goes off, they haven't really got that focal point up front, have they? I know Obafemi came up to play through the middle, yeah. but maybe if they were lacking in any area, Burnley, it's that you know out and out striker through the middle, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I'd say so. Listen, Ashley Barnes has been great for them for over the years, hasn't he? Premier League, he's a handful, dropping back down to the Championship, and he's he's got a few goals. What's he? He's got five goals, so he'll have wanted a few more this season. But it's what he brings to the team, really. He's that focal point, back to goal, trying to link up play. Uh, and he did have a couple of opportunities as well this evening, which he hasn't put away. But yeah, they just looked a little bit frustrated, Burnley. Um, but you know, I'm sure that they, we, we've had a decent season. We're up there for a reason. We've we've competed in most games this season, um, even with them at the Stadium Lights. You know, at half time, two 0 up. Um, but from our point of view, defended really well. Just on those turnovers, just a little bit tired. Yeah, as I said there, down at Norwich, we were excellent a couple of weeks ago. Sprung a few times, you know, forced the errors from the centre backs. Quite a similar kind of game, it wasn't was, it? It yeah. was in a way, yeah, really, but we did, didn't capitalise when we nicked it. Loose with the ball again, give it back as quick as we won it, really. That was the disappointment for me. Um, and then you were maybe waiting for that one good opportunity, aren't you? Which didn't really come. We had the offside one yeah. uh, late on there, but we didn't really have that golden opportunity. You could say we were the only ones with the ball in the back of the net. But That's true, it yeah. Was well yeah. offside, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah. Abdullah yeah. Bar. Let's have a look at the action then from the game and we can discuss some of the points which we've been speaking about. And it was yeah. this press, wasn't it, which was yeah. ever present from Sunderland yeah. tonight? Yeah, that's what Tony Moby and, and the coaching staff would have been delighted with. I think the way we went about it, they'll have set up in training, working in these these patterns of play, really. And then Joe Geldart, he's unlucky. He, he, he reads the situation well, comes on his blind side look. On Cullen there, he doesn't know he's there. If that goes another yard or two ahead, I think Joe's getting on the end of it and he's tucking it away. Uh, and that would have been the difference, but it wasn't to be. But we, we, we did have some half chances. We see Equar, with Dan Neal has one in a minute. Patrick has an opportunity as well. But they were half chances at best, weren't they? I think Dan's is probably the best opportunity because he catches it quite clean. Uh, but at the same time, they didn't really have too many opportunities. And I thought Linden coming into the team tonight was excellent. Uh, good energy, you know what Linden's about whether he's asked to play right wing back or left back as he's been asked to play tonight he gets on with his job uh, tenacious isn't he it doesn't give um, doesn't give things up easy you see there two two opportunities to to get the slide tackle in and he does well and uh, Anthony Patterson a couple of saves at best again yeah. throughout the 90 minutes that one there to to half chance isn't it Harwood um, Bellis up from the back from the set play down into the ground and it's on to him but it's straight at him he palms it away does what he has to and we've got Good numbers back there, and again we've seen it. We'll see the one I think from Linden right on half time. Throws his body in it. We have to do that at times, and you know you're going to have to do that coming up against a team who are 17 unbeaten in the league, going really well, full of confidence uh, on the home patch, and we've and we've limited them to, to very little throughout the 90 minutes. In, in, and in a game where you expect the opposition to have a lot of ball, those set pieces and little opportunities like this yeah. is where you've got to try and capitalise. Yeah, and that's what that's what you know I said there in terms of our pressing. What, what we've done well, what they'll have expected from us, but them, them opportunities there, and that's one we actually do well. Joe Gellart steals it off them into Dan Neal, feeds it out to Patrick, and then that's what Patrick's all about, isn't it? Get his man back, shifts inside onto his left, doesn't catch it clean. You know, if he, if he puts his laces through it a little bit more, finds that top corner, keeper's unsure, palms it wide, and from that corner, Dan Neal catches that really well, uh, but he handles it well, the goalkeeper. As, as poor as he was with his feet throughout the 90 minutes <laughs> and he looked a bag of nerves he handles that one really well because if he spills it we've got a couple of lads there following it in yeah like you say uh, they haven't conceded that many at home this season no 13 13 in what 19 games I think it is 20 games so yeah they've been excellent at home difficult to break down 
a Nathan Teller frustrating evening for him man in form yeah absolutely 19 yeah. goals in all competitions this season for Nathan yeah. Teller uh, probably one of the driving forces yeah. from them being top of the league Daniel credit to Dan there he does well you know a young lad come across he could panic there and have a little little nibble at it but he just puts the brakes on arms go up and he doesn't and uh, it's slight coming together but it's not a penalty yeah, I thought the officials did well overall. Tonight. Yeah, no, they did, yeah, because it seems to be every other game. We've got to give them credit. Yeah, give them credit where it's due. They get pelters on here a lot of the time, don't they? And perhaps most grounds throughout the country. But no, he was. Uh, I thought he was pretty decent, the referee, this now, evening. Is that the best chance of the game? That's that's their big chance, isn't it, for Barnes? Yeah, that's the one you wait for. As a striker, you're probably waiting for that one, aren't you, to drop to him. He's, was he, about eight yards out? No pressure on him, really, and it's just concentration I think put your foot through the ball get over the top of it and he doesn't manage to do so I think this is the Lyndon Gooch save yeah this is the one isn't it right in half time you see we've got six or seven bodies back there all throwing themselves in and they work it quite well you see there now just chops back and look we've, we've overloaded there pressing the ball and Lyndon gets across look at and that Sophie's on his hip really isn't it up and over the top and he's got Alex Pritchard in there behind him as well throwing himself at it this one right after half time front foot Patrick driving in Difficult one for him. You know what he wants to do? Come back inside, but look, they've got two across on the cover. Matson is actually the left back, comes across to help his centre half out. Patrick has to go on his right foot and doesn't get any real power on it, does any straight into the keeper's gloves. A couple of yellows picked up in the second half. A few frustrations, I think, more than anything from, from the Burnley players. Uh, that was uh, Josh Cullen getting his. It was Matson who picked up the only other card in the game. Yeah, that was the, the first yellow there, wasn't it? It's quite a soft one, really, isn't it? Just stops us getting on the counter attack. And this is another one here for. For Barnes, isn't it? They work it quite well, actually. Burnley um, back into his back into his path there, but he chance goes away, and then there's that second yellow card you mentioned there. Matson, isn't it? Comes flying in, and you've said, is it is it possibly a red? I don't think it is. It's a he goes flying in. You know, people always come up with this one where oh, he goes in with force, but yeah, you can go in with force, but his studs are down. He's, he goes in with his feet flat, and I think it's a yellow card. Another Burnley opportunity. And that time it was Zavori with a wild effort. He was sub not long after that. Like you said, uh, the likes of Zavori, Benson, you couldn't really get into the game, could they? No, no, they couldn't. No, weren't at the best tonight, were they? I've seen him, you know, obviously come up to the stadium. I thought Zavori was decent up at the stadium. And, and Benson came off the bench that day, got a goal, and he was quite lively. No kisses uh, this time from Luke? Yeah, no, he'd he done well, Luke, as well. He's, you know, I've given Lyndon man of the match, I think, tonight, maybe coming back into the team and playing in an unfamiliar position at left back done really well but Luke was up there as well and um, this one that's maybe a fraction offside I think if we've got VAR that's perhaps pulling it back but he can you know you can argue can he roll it into Jack Clark who's coming onto it with a side foot with his right foot but takes the shot on Ahmad slows himself down block I think was it Cullen coming across off the underside of his leg and yeah you know six inches lower and we're walking away with three points yeah and I think we might have got lucky there as you say it might have been called offside on another day there was an effort coming up though which was called offside Another chance, though, for Burnley Teller involved and just pulled out the sky there by Anthony Patterson, back from international duty. Yeah, he had a few of them second half, didn't he? Anthony Patterson just crosses coming in or that shot there, no real power on it, just plugs it out of the sky. Another one there, Benson coming in on his left foot. Just Goodmanson, yeah, stands this one up, doesn't he? I think Brown will just get a touch on it and then... That summed Benson's night up, really, didn't it? He's just had that effort up and over the crossbar. That one there, so, look, doesn't kill it dead, yeah. gets away from him. And perhaps and that Linda. move sums up Linda Gooch's night, because you've given him player of the match as well, haven't yeah. you, this evening? Yeah, no, I have, yeah. And I think he, he was lively and defensively. He had to be switched on. He knows that, you know, Linda, he's quite experienced now. He's not, he's not a young lad anymore, is he? Um, and then there's that one right at the death there off the corner. Jack just fizzes it in, but Abdullah Bar stood in front of the <laughs> goalkeeper. It doesn't get a touch on it, does he? But it's ended up in the back of the net, but he's offside. So, overall, a good point away from home. You know, for ourselves, one win in seven, one win in eight now. Going there, we're not in form um, against the team who are bang at it. So, you'll, you'll take the point there and we we'll limited them to, to very little. Uh, don't forget, you can see what the manager and a first-team player has to say uh, about tonight's game first on Sunderland's social media channels. Uh, let's see what that does to the league table tonight. Then, obviously, no one else playing this evening and all the games... Everyone else have getting played over the course of the weekend. Yeah. Um, Sunderland still in the 11th on 54 points now, though. The six points off those playoff positions. All going to change over the weekend, though, isn't it? Yeah, it will do. Yeah, and a game in hand. Sorry, we played a game more than, than most of the teams. Two ahead of West Brom and uh, Blackburn up there in, in fifth as well. Uh, but, yeah, just 
Listen, we've, we've come from a, a tough run of games as well. Played some big teams, haven't we, in recent weeks? Luton, obviously Norwich teams were up there. Um, and obviously tonight, up against the soon-to-be champions, I would imagine. But now we've got a run of games coming up against four teams on paper. I always go back to on paper, don't I? Against teams there, you think, do you know what, we can start getting a few more points on the board now. Can we go and start winning games again? Uh, looking forward to the to the what seven games left. Yes, seven games now left for Sunderland in the 2022-23 season. Uh, just let you know, Danny, that uh, Sky have also agreed with you that Lyndon Gooch was oh, player of the match. There we go. Great minds think alike. What what was it about <laughs> Lyndon's performance? Is the circumstance of him starting a game from his injury layoff as well? Yeah, a few things for me. Yeah, so he's been out for a while. Um, He's played at left back. Yeah. You know, he's predominantly right footed. He's not bad with his left, Linden, to be fair. Fizzed a couple of nice balls down the, the the far side second half. But you just he's just so sees. committed. He's got a good yeah. engine on him as well. Hasn't he is. He? Yeah, he never gives things up. Uh, that's what I like about. And I always say about Linden, if, if things aren't quite going for him, he doesn't go hiding. He doesn't go missing. He gets on with things and he goes the other way. If anything, he goes a little bit more. Goes pressing. He wants to get after things. He gets a bit aggressive at times, um, and he just gets on with it. You know, he's, he's similar to Luke O'Nine in a way. He'll go out there, he, he loves pulling on that red and white shirt and he'll go out there and he'll put a shift in where, wherever the manager asks him to go and play. And you see again, coming up against a tricky customer, and, and I always found it as well, I mean, you know, I played a lot of games at left back, when you come up against a Patrick Roberts or a Benton who's a winger playing on the opposite side who wants to come in on their left foot, they're tricky customers because you can sometimes overcompensate, show them too much down the line, but Linden, I thought he got his distances right. Well, maybe that one first off there, what we've seen there, but he, he was got caught napping, but he recovered well. He got the double blocking, didn't he, on uh, on Benton, it was. Yeah. Uh, and you see there, right in half-time, throws his body in, gets the block in there. He's committed and challenges. Those two obviously um, having a good battle, him and uh, Roberts. Yeah, it's Conor Roberts as well. He gets forward for them down that down that right-hand side. And, you know, you, you look at his face there. He's, he's wincing a few times. He's blowing a little bit, and that's that's what happens. You can train as much as you like, but you can't. Sleep on the coach home to, tonight. Well, then. he certainly will. He'll be cramping up, I'd imagine. The old <laughs> stiff leg comes out at times. But uh, no, he'll enjoy his journey back. And as you say there, he's picked the man in the match up off Sky. We've given man of the match as well. And this one, right at the death, doesn't switch off. He could have switched off there. He's got a man in front of him, Obafemi. But he reacts. Watch, just watch it now because he comes across. And I think Luke O'Nine's in a good position. But Brownhill's unmarked penalty spot. Just gets a touch on it, takes it away from Linden. But look at Linden's reaction. Yeah. Could have stayed where he was and just, you know, sometimes players get caught in the headlights, but he reacts well and goes and puts pressure. Benson's touch gets away from him and Linden gets the block in. So, uh, no, I thought he was excellent. Luke O'Nine, you can look at Danny Bart, look at the, the lads at the back as well. Um, no one really stood out at the top end of the pitch in terms of opportunities, but the work rate, Jack Clark mentioned, Jack and Patrick tracking back, helping out the fullbacks. So it was a, a good all-round um, shift from the team, good performance uh, and a good point. Yes, a good point. And we move on to our next game. You've got the weekend off, Sunderland fans, because Sunderland are next in action. Hey, guess what? It's a Friday it's night. Friday. Don't we? Uh, it's Friday, good Friday. 5 30 kickoff. We thought tonight was weird. Next Friday is going to be even more weird. 5 30 kickoff at the Stadium of Light against Hull City. We'll be here on air from around uh, 5 pm then on uh, Friday. Okay, then enjoy the rest of your weekend. There's a lot of it to come. We'll see you soon.